Hello everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on page six. Rose Perfume, Stamperia's newest collection. This is, wow, I forget. I think this is from the eight by eight. It's kind of interesting in this collection, I noticed that uh, even though the it's an eight by eight pack, they didn't change the scale of the patterns, which I like because then you can interchange the um, the 12 by 12, you can use a 12 by 12 and an eight by eight on the same page because the scale is the same. You can do it anyway, but it's just a little more, I, I think it looks better if the scale is the same consistently on a, any given page. So I've got this and then I'm gonna put a couple of things on top of it. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and glue it down. As always, I'm using Oh, my powder puff mahogany and I can tell it's time to clean my tip because I'm having such a hard time getting it off um, so I've inked the edge with mahogany powder puff So one of the reasons I've made a six page album right now is, I mean, I made one many, maybe even a couple years ago, is if you have six pages, then each side of the page can represent a month, right? So you have um, 12 pages to represent the month. So um, one of the fun things to do with six page album is take, you know, sort of a highlight of January and put it on one page and then February would have another one. It's just the highlight of the year, not not a whole series of photos, just a handful for any given page and you've also got room on the insert. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down these photo mats. These are four by six. This is just a straight photo mat. And then this is a bifold. So this one is eight and a quarter by, excuse me, eight and a quarter by six, and you're gonna score um, in half, eight and one eighth, I mean four and one eighth. Um, in keeping with the pattern, I have these elements, and I'm going to lay them in like so. Actually, this one goes this way. So that's what the inside's gonna look like, and then this is gonna slightly overlay. So you have room for three, uh, four by six. Let me make sure this isn't gonna, yeah. I was just checking to make sure it's not gonna expose my map, my map, my magnet. And I just use clear, you know what? Maybe I'll do this. No, you want more pink and less green because the base is, the green. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, I just used clear um, scotch tape to hold my magnets down. I'm going to try this a couple of times to see how I like it. I think the tape is thinner um, and it might actually work uh, better in terms of, um, you know, keeping more of the attraction between the magnets because it feels thinner than the double-sided tape. Okay, so this needs to be trimmed down just a bit, which I knew. I just didn't know how much, and then I do need to make sure I'm doing it the same direction. <laughs> That's it, okay. I'm gonna mark this. Get a little ink on it, and I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on what I think. I, it can't be any worse, right? <clears throat> and it doesn't really, it's not necessary to be double-sided tape. Just something to smooth those harsh, harsh edges off because um, it's not beveled, right? It'd be ideal to have a beveled magnet, <clears throat> and then your paper would go over it nice and neatly. Okay. 
Okay, now we do the opposite. It's hard to tell. So um, I always, when I'm color blocking, I always like to put down the smallest pieces first. And um, the reason is, in this case, it's not a big deal, but the reason is that the narrower the, um, the piece gets, the harder it is to trim in my trimmer. So if I'm going to have to um, trim to fit, <clears throat> I want to pick up the biggest of the two pieces. It's just easier to handle in the trimmer. So there's a pro tip for you. <laughs> Uh, looks like it's a little too big too, so I'm going to take a little off the top. <clears throat> Perfect. Now a little off the width. The other thing I do when I'm color blocking is I mark both sides because if this goes in crooked, I want to make sure that I um, do a slight angle to make it appear to be straight um, because I can't lift that back up. So what I'm looking for is that equal border, which looks pretty good here, but occasionally I'll do that and this won't be quite right and I need to you know just tweak it a little. But in this case, it looks like it's pretty square. Or meaning right angles. <clears throat> okay. Something about the bottom of my glue container doesn't feel like it wants to sit flat. I, I'd like to keep these bottles around as long as possible. Um, the older they get, the softer they get. They, they get easier to push. <laughs> and little things like that matter when you spend a lot of time crafting and you're old. Okay, so that's gonna be the top one. Here is the bottom. And so I haven't decided if I want this to come over or if I want this to come over. They are gonna overlay each other slightly. So that's one look, and then that's the other. And I think I like it on top. So that means we can go ahead and put this one down. I think I'll measure it, but I think it's about a half inch is what I'm doing. Let's check it out. <clears throat> yep, half inch, half inch from left to right, and a half inch from top to bottom. This top to this top, side to side. Okay, now we're gonna add this one. Same thing, I'm just gonna look for that, the two edges to be consistent. I'm going to glue around this so your photo can be tucked in. Oh, good morning, Nala. your photo all the way across. I'm going to burnish this a little bit. And that, so the other reason I um, was doing some testing with the magnets was to make sure it would adhere after adding the, these two layers, but I tested that offline. And the way you do that is you, you place your magnets 
and then you, you think about what might go between them. So I have a magnet here and a magnet on this side. So that's one layer of paper, then this cardstock is another layer, and then this is another layer. Use the paper that you're actually going to design it with because the cardstock typically is thicker than the designer paper. So if I tried to put which what would be one, two, three, four layers of just designer paper, um, it would feel different than if you're using the cardstock, three designer papers and one cardstock. So that's just an easy way to test it. Um, always try to keep your magnets as close together without uh, stuff on top of them as you can. Now, the other thing would be to construct this. And I went back and forth, not sure if I was going to layer this on top or beneath. Um, uh, but it's always best practice to have as many few layers between as possible because remember we're also going to add a photo here a photo here and a photo here so that's all going to add you know more um, distance between or increase the distance between the magnets so but it still feels quite good um, so yeah okay so that's page six everybody thank you as always for tuning in i'll be back soon with page seven <laughs>